been uh, had some requests for video about my minimum electric power system. So uh, first video I've ever done. So bear with me and excuse me. Uh, I'll try to do my best. Uh, anyway. Here's the rig. I'll just go over basics first and then get into a little more detail. But uh, I built this in, uh, say, 16, 17, 17, and uh, moved to Colorado, worked on a house out there for two and a half years. I flew it one time, uh, had good luck. Uh, down at Lebanon, Tennessee, on my 170 Falcon. I used to, I tried it on a U2, but U2 weighs so much, I got a bad back. I had to get rid of it and get the, the 195 Falcon. But I tried it on the 170 Falcon, and it flew, but I was uh, right at the top of the weight range. So I traded for this 195 Falcon to handle the weight better, and it don't weigh as much, and I can handle it better. So that's what I'm flying now with this. But uh, anyway, I got up 600 feet and uh, flew around, cruised around a little bit. And I see my voltage getting low, so uh, I chopped it, landed on the blacktop, taxied back to my car. That was great. So I had to wait four years to get back working on it. So that's what I've been doing since I've got free time. But anyway, the, I'll start here at the top. You know, it, it hooks on with a, a metal yoke that goes over the keel just like you would attach a trike but you only need one axis you know just running the way you swing uh, the tubes they go back and forth so the rig stays where it's supposed to be in the uh, lateral movement with the you know the front to back you got your weight it's got to move so it's attached here with this little plate on my harness here and I've I've had deals like Radar Bernstein had where you got the motor on the back and I uh, had a winch and I thought well I could launch off the winch and turn this thing on and fly around but uh, things just didn't work for me so and I couldn't keep the winch because I don't have anyone here to fly with me. I taught my brother how to fly and uh, he had health problems and can't fly anymore. So I sold the winch and this is what I decided I was going to do. So anyway, these tubes go back and attach to the rig here, and that's what locks everything together, you know, whenever you swing your weight this way. And these wires go over to the uh, junction of your uh, uh, crossbar and your leading edge. You just hook on with a little round uh, uh, coupling, you know, the barrel screw coupling. And you have to set everything up, you know, and, and check everything and measure when you're setting all this up. But that's fun, and you know this is what I'm talking about on the wing. And these are just bungees I use on my tying my harness and stuff on. But anyway, they're attached down here and attached up here, and they go together in a point. And then you got just one wire that goes to the wing and hooks on there. And I just curl them up here when I'm transporting it, so no connections, only three connections: the connection here on each wing. And those two there, that's an extra one. Uh, so this is inch and a half, 6061 T6. This is the length I had for my U2 and my 170, because this all has to be sized to each glider. So I had to add more on to uh, the 195. Of course, this is just push-pull forces here, and very little because uh, it's only putting out, I don't know, I can't really test it. Uh, close to 80, 100 pounds, something like that thrust. And you know, the, the keel has to be cut off because when you props out here, the keel, I got three inches clearance. Whenever this drops down, you have to calculate all that. And uh, the keel rests on here. And uh, excuse me for not being so good a spokesman. But I used airfoil tubing here just to cut drag and give it it's strong. And this is just channel aluminum. And I just laid all this out. I took pictures of uh, the fly pad and a couple of minimum systems 
and just got angles off of pictures and went to work, you know, checking dimensions and designing all this up. Uh, the first motor I tried was a rimfire, smaller motor, gear, gear drive reduction, and it just didn't have the power. So I just, you know, you know how it is when you're low on funds. But I found this motor, it's only a couple hundred dollars from a guy that's a RC uh, motor. And so I had to machine a little bit here to get this cog on here. And then I calculated a 2.5 reduction to get, uh, this thing turns like 6,000 or so. And I'm running about 2,200 on the props. Bigger, slower, better. And I had some failures on my wells. I did get me a, a TIG welder for aluminum. So I'm not very good, but I got it built anyway, as you can see. Um, so 2.5 to 1 reduction. These bearings in here, you know, uh, and they're not thrust bearings, but they're, they're rated for this thrust and the actual thrust way over what this puts out. So it's working. And this is a heat sink. The guy, the RC guy said, oh, it's going to burn up and this and that, and you're going to put a heat sink on it. But everything's been warm. I can run it up and the batteries stay warm. You know, everything's working great. But anyway, I had to put this on there. This is just some tubing that I had scraps laying around. I built this thing from. I didn't know if it was going to be this good or not. But anyway, I apologize for the, some of the crappy workmanship. But I did learn to do aluminum TIG. This is hard. First thing. Got it built. And this is just a folding prop that I made out of aluminum channel and this half inch shaft solid uh, steel. Uh, and, you know, they just uh, fold out. I've seen these on some full scale airplanes. And just got the bungee cords and give it the gas they to grow out and stop. And when you slow it down, they come back in. And uh, these are, this is a 5224 right now. I hadn't cut it off. It seemed to be doing real good. This is the lowest amp draw prop I got and the, the lowest pitch of 24. Uh, 104 amps is what this one's pulling with full set of batteries because as soon as you start using the juice, that draw goes down. But you can see how it all is. And, you know, it's just a homemade rig. I mean, I don't, I got one set of, plan of this real rig right here it's just uh, you know see the pants and then I got these scooter wheels I've seen them with one wheel but you know I wanted something I could roll around and set up straight when you're on the ground so I just used that thing made a deal in here to hold a bolt axle these are scooter wheels you can get them on Amazon or eBay for those scooters and you can get the biggest ones you can get you know um, and then the wire is just attached through to a bolt attached through here. And that's that's the power rig. I mean, it's working great. Like I said, 2.5 to reduction. And this motor is rated at 8,000 watts. And the one prop I had was pulling 9,000 watts. So, But he said it's burst up to 15,000. But I don't want to give that test, give that test to it. But... Uh, it's doing great. I mean, I don't know about those bigger, you know, uh, what we call max motors. I'm sure they're great, but 200 bucks, you know, there's a big difference. Anyway, that's that's the rig. Uh, I guess we look at the battery setup over here next. These first batteries I had, I swear, uh, I had to, I got them from China. They were in aluminum cases. They lied about the weight. They were twice as heavy as what they said. And I flew the one 900 or 600 foot climb four years ago and <clears throat> went back to check them and they were all dead. So you gotta got the Zippies, 5200 milliamp uh, 8S Zippies. And uh, they, they did pretty good, but I overcooked them, so they're gone. So I tried these. These are, let's see, F C O N E G Y. Got them off Amazon. Two batteries were ninety-five dollars. They're eight thousand milliamps, eight uh, S. So this is a sixteen S rig, sixteen S motor, 
16S ESC 16S battery output for these. Let's see, these are 4S, two of them, 8S, two more, 16S, three sets. It's 2400 milliamps, 24 amp hours, all hooked together. Uh, of course, you got your spark switch there. Do that one first. And then you turn this one on for the main power. Uh, and I, I got this going through my controller that's on the crossbar. And that turns the power on to the, uh, to the ESC. Now, when I got through flying the other day, it's down to 59 volts. I start out at 67 volts. I go down to 50 volts. Cut off. And this is, all this is, is a radio control airplane servo tester. And you have to beef it up and, and give you something to go with that. Just give it gas, and there you go, full power till I get ready to quit. Roll it back down. That's my stopwatch to time my flight. And uh, this thing has to have power. And the servo tester, I'm pretty sure, has to have power. So when this cable runs back, and I tap this number two cell on the the low side of one of my batteries to get 7.4 volts to power this voltmeter since it's 59, 58, 9, 59 volts and the ESC, I mean the uh, servo tester. So then this signal wire wants to get the maximum voltage so I tap onto the last cell, the, the 16S cell which is 67 volts full and that gives me my reading and since they're in parallel the whole pack you know is the same so that's where I get my voltage and my, operate my servo tester and uh, of course this is where you turn that off turn the main switch off and turn that off and that's it it's just a uh, simple as I can figure out to make other than all them wires but it's working and I just measured everything this is 22 pounds, not counting the harness, but everything besides the harness, I just, this is just to store and trans, transport this, you know, holds everything together on the back of my little CRV. But this is 22 pounds, and this is 23 pounds, and we'll get to the crossbar, that's about 5 pounds. So we're looking at 50 pounds extra, which I only weigh 100 and 65 when I'm supposed to be I'm like 167 right now in the harness so I'm, I'm in the weight range real good on the 195 but if you ever seen tandem rigs for arrow tow this is a copy of that only on smaller scale these wheels come with this 170 Falcon that I uh, I got when I was teaching my brother and some other people how to how to tow up on the winch, but uh, all it is is a tandem tow rig setup, uh, and you can get this from, uh, that's just nylon stuff, and McMaster car, it's got everything in the world you ever want to build anything from, and this goes up and wraps around the uh, down tube, and this is a regular crossbar, this comes with a glider, and then these wheels come with that thing, but they're just arrow pneumatic wheels and a little piece of tubing same size as this is in here with a, a spacer I think out of this stuff and then there you go and then this is a caster on one side and then this is your control handle on the other side and it uh, you, know, you reach over and steer it you steer this one this one follows and the two wheels in the back follow and there you go and then this wraps around just like before so this is about five pounds I don't know much else to say other than I got lots of tools to make lots of things. I know most people don't have all these, so it uh, you have to be set up to make all this stuff, you know. The reason I went to a TIG welder is to save the weight of all those bolts and gussets, you know, because most stuff like that's bolted together and gusseted and more weight. This is about as light as I can think of coming up with it. And uh, it's held up real well. So far, I got about five or six flights. All I need is just more time.
to do uh, so I just want to show you all my props I make uh, so, so much fun I mean I really enjoy it I, I built props for need. my RC anyway, planes uh, there's a big biplane uh, I scratch built and land and again. this prop yeah. here I built it these these props with that motor set up run anywhere from 20 22 to 26 pounds I put this props put this prop on I made I got 35 pounds of thrust out of it but of course that pulls more more juice anyway uh, there's another one I built for my RC planes so I said well I can build these props I'll just build half at a time so there they are and I got a, a little booklet from a guy that builds props and told me how to do it but you need you need a saw you need a band saw you need a sander uh, you see up there you need a draw knife you need a chisel <laughs> it's time consuming but it's fun anyway that's that's how I build my props uh, and I got aluminum insert in there for the pin uh, looks small but it's light and it works no sense over overbuilding things you know anyway there's there's my props I like to build and I got a whole box of them over there <laughs> the thing I forgot to mention is uh, when you got your keel cut off and you're wanting to uh, set this up I just set the glider up on this kickstand I call it and go in the cut off keel and then you can roll the rig in underneath it and hook it all up and everything when you get ready to go, you just uh, take this keel off and let the glider set down on the, the, the brace there. Uh, so pretty much got to have that or a helper to hold it up for you. But everything I got, I, I didn't can do all I by myself. I didn't mention, but I got these batteries off of Amazon. And uh, where I tap in the voltage, I tap in these little, you know, test ports for balancing. And uh, I've got... RC balance chargers and every now and then I will go through and balance all the cells but this is a charger for 67 volts or 60 volts it tap it runs it up to 67 volts 0.3 and it charges all of them at the same time I just tap on here at the positive and here at the negative a full full down charge runs about two and a half to three hours to charge it back up with eight amps uh, can't afford but one set of batteries so I just fly once a day go out there and try to make it uh, my best I can so uh, that's uh, that's the battery I can think again. of coming up Sorry, I didn't get all the details and uh, it's held up real well so far I got about five or six flights all I need is some more time uh, to learn how to stay in these thermals so I hope this tells you what you need anyway uh, just uh, send me more messages and I'll try to help anybody I can